Hey guys, it's me, Henry, that geeky chemistry student you've all come to know through this crazy thing called YouTube. But the time has come for me to leave. There are a few things about my life that you don't know, and now's the time for me to tell you. This is my draw, my life, the truth. Let's take it way back to 1992, the year I was born. I was a pretty cute baby, and my parents had longed for a child that they could share their life with. And so, after an apparently very long labour, my mum and dad brought me home from the hospital and into a pretty privileged life in London. I was lucky enough to have the best start in life that money could buy. Though, of course, some might say money is a curse. Anyway, whatever way you look at it, I was a little guy with a whole lot of money. My parents made sure that I grew up surrounded by everything I needed and wanted in my life. From the outside looking in, and I'm sure even for you guys watching this now, my life looked pretty carefree. You're probably shaking your heads right now knowing that a bud is coming up, and here it is. The expectations for my parents to be as successful as they were, and with the competition they set for me against my many friends I had, ensured that a big weight was there for me to deal with. I knew what I wanted to become, and with the most privileged of lives, I was left with no room for excuses. Once I started to go to school, I was always at the top of my class. I had a network of friends from around London, and on paper, it seemed as though I was thriving in the life I was dealt. But by the time I started high school, I realised that despite the straight A's, and the crowds of friends I had following me, there was something missing. I began to question the darker thoughts I'd been having whilst growing up, and a dark cloud began to follow my every move. Towards the end of high school, I started to experiment with these dark thoughts, and as I sat in class answering all of the questions, continuing to get straight A's, and living out my reputation as a teacher's favourite student, I opened my old computer and I began to anonymously write mean comments to strangers. The comments were mild, and I moved between people quickly, so that no one person was taking all of the weight. I also made sure that no one found out. It was my dark secret, and as long as I could post one mean comment, I could continue to excel for the rest of the day. Once I reached university, I decided to pursue my love of the sciences. I thrived in this so much that I continued on to study for my PhD in chemistry. Despite my good intentions, the dark thoughts I had as a boy were not leaving me, and sometimes it felt as though they were growing stronger, darker even. I wanted to be good. I worked in charities, and I made friends with different people from around the school. My studies within the lab at university allowed me to look into what was happening within me, and eventually I came to the conclusion that man is not truly one, but truly two. I was a man stuck between the division of good and ill. I decided I had to find a way to separate the two halves within me, and so I created a lab in my room from the pieces I stole, or let's say borrowed, from the uni. I tried a series of different reactions, mixtures and solutions that I'd experimented with, until eventually I created the drug that would become the end of me. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. I hesitated for the longest time before I put my theory into practice. You see, I knew the drug could kill me, but the question of whether it would work overrode my fear I had. And so, alone in my room, I drank it. The most intense pain and nausea took over my body, until, for a brief moment, there was nothing of me left. Though it turned out the pain had passed as quickly as it arrived, and I sat on my bed feeling much lighter and happier than I had before. I walked into the bathroom for the mirror, and that's when I saw I wasn't Henry Jekyll at all. For the first time, I saw Edward Hyde. Or Ed, as you know him. Now I know you must be confused. How can I be both of the entirely different people you've come to know on this channel? I'm sorry, I'll try and explain. At first I used Ed to continue my anonymous online personality. He was more brutal than I, but I kept him hidden until I realised that as Ed, I was unrecognisable. And so I turned to YouTube, and Henry's Hyde was born. Here, I could be exposed as Ed. I could be vile. And people could see me, watch me on repeat if they wanted but they could never be able to hold me, Henry, responsible. So Ed was open in his hatred, and he was able to make you guys feel bad about yourselves. But in all of this, right next to him, sat me, Henry, cleaning up Ed's mess, and making you guys feel better. Allowing myself to release the dark side of me through Ed, allowed the cloud that had followed me my entire life to clear up. I was able to make you guys happy on YouTube, but I also started to spend more time with my friends at university. I joined the JCR, I got myself involved in the school, and I even raised money for charity. Everything was great until three months ago. One morning I woke up for the day as usual, and as I sat up, I knew I felt different than I usually did. In my confusion, I looked at my hands and I saw they weren't mine. They were Ed's. But I hadn't taken the drug, and I sat there wondering how this could have happened. Suddenly I realised Ed had grown. 
He was stronger now. He was strong enough to appear without the drug he was created with, and I was losing control of him. I knew it was time for me to make a choice between myself and Ed. I could continue my life as Ed, but I'd be hated and rejected. But I wouldn't be hiding a part of myself. Or I could continue my respected life as the well loved and successful Henry Jekyll. But I'd have to say goodbye to Ed, to the potion, and to YouTube. I begrudged the little choice I had, but I knew I had to continue as Henry. After weeks of torture and longing for the dual life that I was so content in living, I had a moment of weakness, and I took the drug I'd forbidden myself to take. Ed came back with a vengeance then. My devil had long been caged. He came out roaring. He chose his victim, and he bullied her like nothing I'd seen before. That same girl took the entirety of his wrath until she felt no other option than to take Ed's own advice. She killed herself. And as Henry, I remembered each of Ed's actions as though they were my own. And I live each second of my life with the guilt, not the girl. My ability to sustain a life as Henry became more and more out of my control. I spent my days taking the drug to prevent myself from becoming Ed. But as it started to run out, I was unable to recreate what I once thought would allow me to be entirely good. One way or another, we're coming to the end of a life of Henry Jekyll. But there's still enough good within me to know that I can't leave the world to the mercy of Ed's pure evil. And so with this I say goodbye. And a thank you to you. For a while you, you gave my life balance and purpose. You took the burden of Ed off me to make my life lighter. For that I'll always be grateful. Goodbye Henry's Hyde. Goodbye YouTube.